Uh, Villanova, UConn, this was a game that I think people expected UConn to cruise. At least Vegas expected them to cruise if you look at the pregame point spread. And this game was up in the air in the first half, especially. UConn made a couple different runs and ultimately sustained those runs, held on to a lead late. Uh, and I don't know that I'd call it a comfortable win, but it also never really felt in question at this point. So uh, I guess let's just throw this up to all three of us. Is anybody willing to go out and say they think UConn is the best team in the country, given what we've seen so far? Matt is. It's the, it's them or Houston for me. They're, they're one, two in some order. Wow. No Purdue, Jim. You're not, you're not throwing yeah. Purdue in there. They're close, but I, I, I think in the in the postseason environment, I have a little, still a little bit of question about their guard play. Like I have them like top six, but okay, not okay. quite in that, in that top one discussion. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I just like again, and I've said this on the field of sixty eight before. Watching Coach Hurley on the sidelines with this team, he has a confidence, and he knows how good they are, and he doesn't have to will them to victory by being, you know, over, I don't want to say dramatic is the right term, but he knows his team is, he's, he's almost, he's calmer on the sidelines when you watch him. I thought a huge play in the game, you know, everyone talks about Andre Jackson and just how much of a glue guy he is. And he's the guy that kind of keeps us all together. And a lot of what he does doesn't go in the stat sheet. And when the game's on the line, he drills a three in the corner. I thought that was a huge play. And that's, Listen, the best teams in the country, talked about it before, you want to win a championship, they find ways to win. And I thought that three by him, listen, Sonogo didn't have his best game, right? And he had a finish down the stretch that was all world. He kind of caught it in traffic and had to go underneath a couple guys and reverse it on the other side of the rim. And when the game's on line, you want to put the ball in your best players' hands and have them in, in areas to be successful. And that's what the, the, both those guys did. And again, Jackson, a guy that's not a – quote unquote, three point shooter knocks it down with the game on the line. And it just shows you coach Hurley has confidence in his kids. Those kids are playing that way. They didn't play their best tonight, but they're undefeated. And there's a huge target on their back and everyone's going to play the best against them going forward. And it's all about just finding ways to win games. Some of them are going to be really pretty. Some of them aren't going to be pretty at all. And you got to find ways to win. And that's what they did tonight. Yeah, I mean that, that team's awesome. I just what from the start of the year, watching them against mid major teams and then going out to Portland, what they did, I've been so impressed with them. They, I, I joke, they like they're the get off the bus team for me this year, where they get off and I'm already scared because they're huge, they're physical, <laughs> they're dominant, uh, and, and it's been you know really impressive to watch them so far. You mentioned one play, the the Jackson three, one I loved was you know they were struggling to score. It was, Villanova was hanging with that whole first half, and uh, Jordan Hawkins like caught up to a backdoor cut in the lane, poked it away, saved it, came down and hit a three on the other end. It was kind of like the defense into offense. Vescovy did that for Tennessee today. Des Moines Hodge did the same thing for Missouri. Like the poke away defensively, you go get the three on the other end. It just kind of changes the momentum. It gives, I think gives the shooter more confidence too. They just got so many weapons. UConn does. They're deep. They wear some, they wear teams down. Like Villanova was right there. Like I said, for a half. And I think, the physicality just kind of wore on them because UConn has so many bodies to throw at you. Like Calcaterra has been arguably their best guard sometimes this year. And he played seven minutes tonight. Like it, they've got just crazy options out there. And uh, yeah, I, I think one or two, I, I'm very comfortable with saying that with UConn. Yeah. It was their defense too. Right. I mean, they turned Villanova over 18 times. Villanova goes five for 22 from the three point line. Like that to me, they can win with their offense, but they can also win with their defense. And that, to me, is what makes them even more dangerous outside of just how talented they are in their personnel. Jim, how many points would Jay Wright have been worth tonight in this game? Eight, eight point finish. If Jay Wright's coaching that team, how much does that swing it? Not enough to win. I, I think I think I actually think Neptune's game plan was awesome. He, he slowed the game down, forced UConn to shoot 33s to 20, 23-2s. Uh, they attacked some of UConn's guards uh, put put like they're, they're more physical like Caleb Daniels and Cam Whitmore driving on the smaller guards for UConn I think that's why Calcaterra played so little the, the game plan was really good just I think UConn's defense and talent won out in the end we're dropping our merch we gotta start calling Underwood Daddy Brad but I'm a 
Podcast.